Alrighty then. 403 to the HAZ, Mr. Nelson. Where, 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 where? Here. Okay. Just crushing it today on the trig, y'all. Feeling real good. So, in the last video, my lovely pre Cal 12s, we learned about sinusoidal waves. So, our two big functions, baseline functions that we're working on, are the sine wave which starts at zero because sine of zero is zero. And the, so we got our x-axis, our y-axis. So the sinusoidal wave starts at zero and does something like this. And it goes on forever in both directions. Ah, oh, man, I'm just the worst at graphing. Okay. And it's, uh, its baseline has an amplitude of one, which means the distance from the middle of, from the middle, midline, the midpoint of the function to each uh, max and min is one. <clears throat> which means, if, so if my amplitude is one, the total thickness or the total um, height of my function is actually two. Amplitude is just referring to the midpoint to the peak. So this is my sine wave. And then my cosine wave, it, at cos of zero, I'm at one. So it's just basically kind of something like that. Oh, I'm the worst at graphing. Uh, and I'm also a perfectionist, so <laughs> bad combination. So let's, uh, so I'm gonna basically, I'm gonna zero out here and here. That's what I need to do, making sure. Something like that, okay? Oh my goodness, sorry guys. There we go, all CC, CC, there we go, okay. That only took an hour. Fix it, fix it, okay, sorry. So, Y is equal to sine of X. Y is equal to cos of x in blue. Okay? Now we're going to start doing function transformations on these bad boy motherfuckers. Okay? Um, and so we know that our baseline functions are where basically this is our baseline function, just like our baseline function for linear equations is y is equal to x. Our baseline function for quadratic equations is y is equal to x squared. Radical functions, it's y is equal to the square root of x, yada, yada, yada. This is what we got to start transforming. This is our baseline. And y is equal to okay, y is equal to sine x and y is equal to cos x. These are our two baseline functions. We're going to work with them individually. And then our transformations look like they have looked in all the other units. A sine B X minus uh, H Plus, okay. So these are our functions up here. And then this is the transformation of sine, and the transformation of cos is exactly the same, except we replace sine with cos. Now, in the textbook, and in maybe other sources, they, they use C and D instead of H and K. They just use different letters. We've been using H and K in every other unit so far, so I'm just going to stick with H and K because I don't want to... Why, why introduce new letters when we had old letters? Now, I might discover as I move along in this unit that there's a reason they did that. But ignorance is bliss, and I am blissful, so... Okay. 
So, and just like in every other unit on function transformations that we've done, A and K, A and K are going to mess with my Y, basically with uh, um, the, the, the vertical coordinates, the Y coordinates. Y coordinates, okay? And by Y coordinates, I mean the coordinates of my max and my min might change by extending. Um, and I might shift up and down, right? That's what the K is going to do. And that's going to be make, messing with my Y coordinates. X's will stay the same. And just like in every other unit as well, B and H are my X coordinates. Okay? And just like in every other unit, B and H kind of have an inverse relationship as compared to A and K. So we know that we just take, so let's talk about A. Let's talk about A and B right now, okay? So A, we know that is the amplitude. Okay? And it represents the distance from the midpoint to the top or the bottom. That's the amplitude, okay? And if a, the absolute value of A is bigger than 1, it's going to be a stretch. And if A, the absolute value of A is some number between 0 and 1, it's going to be a compression. It's going to be flattening. We're going to be reducing the uh, yeah, so if A is a half, it means we're basically halving the amplitude. We're making it a half as, half as big. This is the same as every other unit we've done. And again, if A is negative, we're going to get a reflection in the x-axis. So if I had y is equal to negative, negative sine x, this is telling me that A is negative 1 which means that I'm basically just reflecting it in the x-axis. And this, this would look like basically the reflection of the red y is equal to sine x. It would just look like this. Right? It's just, it's a reflection. The dotted line is a reflection of the red line, the sine line. Because that's just a reflection of the x-axis. Okay? That's A. And that's really all there is to it, A. B, we know B is dealing with the period, or how long it takes to do one full cycle, where we max out, we hit a min, and we come back to where we started. That's a full cycle. And a full cycle on our baseline functions is 2 pi. So B, now remember, B has an inverse relationship to period. Okay, so if the period is equal to 2 pi divided by b, b is equal to 2 pi divided by the period. Okay, those two are the same. So if I want to figure out what the period is and they give me a b, well, if the absolute value of b is greater than 1, so if it was like y is equal to sine of 3x, b is a number greater than 1, well, that actually represents a period of 1 divided by a number that's bigger than 1, or a fraction. So that means that we're actually going to be, sorry, a period would be 2 pi divided by some number bigger than 0, bigger than 1. That's going to represent a shrinking of the period. The per it's, going to get, it's going to do a cycle faster. So that means if b is a number bigger than 1, well then 2 pi divided by b is going to make is going to make the period smaller. So it's going to be a compression. It's the opposite, the inverse of what happens with A, just like in every other scenario. And then if B is a fraction or a decimal, it's not a number bigger than 1, then in that case, anything divided by a decimal is going to be a bigger number, so it's going to be a, a stretch along the x-axis. It's going to make it so, instead of just a regular function like this, if we stretch it, it's going to end up looking like this, right? It's going to just be a much longer wavelength stretch. 
wavelength, the length of the wave, okay? N, if B is negative, we get a reflection in N, in the x-axis, the y-axis, sorry. So if I was to reflect, if I had y is equal to sine of negative x, y, so if I had y is equal to sine of negative x, well then that would, I'm going to put it in green, it would just be a reflection around here, so I would just be reflecting it. And by doing that, it would actually end up being the same as negative sine x. Okay, that's what the reflection would look like. And I know that because this is now being mirrored by this. Okay. So that is A and B, probably the more difficult ones. And now we have to work with H and K, okay? And so in this video, I'm just going to kind of explain everything, and then in the next video, we'll actually go through and we'll solve problems. Let me make sure I'm still filming. What a miracle. What a miracle. Okay, so that was that stuff. Write it down. Actually, I'll leave it up, just so you can kind of hold on. Impression. Man, Red, why do you suck? Are you serious? Dude. Oh, I got the wrong Red. Uh, you know what? Good enough. Okay. So, K is really easy, okay? K is just like in every other function transformation, it's just gonna be my shift up or my shift down. If K is positive, if it's a number bigger than one, bigger than zero, because if there's no K, it's nothing. But if there is a K, it means something's happening. If it's a number bigger than zero, we're shifting it up or to positive to positive y's, okay? We're making it more positive. And if k is less than zero, we're shifting it down. Or to more negative y's. So if I had, okay, if I had, y is equal to sine, let's do cos, we've been doing too much sine, y is equal to cos x minus 1. Now notice that that minus 1 is not in the bracket, right? So it's, it's k, it's not, it would have to be in a bracket to be h, so we know. So if it was cos of x, well I'll put it all in the bracket so we know. Cos of x minus 1, k is minus 1. So now we're taking, we're taking every coordinate and we're moving it down by one. So if this is the beginning of cos, the new, the new max will happen at zero because we've subtracted one from it, okay? The new midpoint is going to be at negative one and the new minimum will be at negative two, okay? And then the new midpoint is at negative one, right? So this is what this graph, the new transform graph of cos is equal to minus one look something like that, okay? It's basically, it's so bad. <laughs> so it's gonna be basically parallel and shift. So that's, and it would just keep going too, right? It would just keep going. So that's a shift of negative one. We've just moved, literally taken the whole thing and moved it down by one, okay? Now I, going to erase this and redraw it for the last one. Which is H. And H is our, we call it our phase shift. Okay? And it's just basically shifting us along our x-axis, along our period. Okay? We're, we're shifting the period. We're shifting where it starts, where it ends, all that stuff called the phase shift and again if h if h is positive if it's bigger than zero it means we're shifting it 
to the right or to positive x, just like in every other function transformation. It's the opposite. If it's negative, we're moving positive. If it's positive, we're moving negative. Okay? And h is a number smaller than zero. So if it's negative, we're shifting it. Shifting, so if it's greater than zero, we're shifting it negative or to the left. Shift it positive to the right. Okay, so what does that look like? So here's our, uh, oh my god, Mr. Nelson, get it together, dude. Holy crap, this can't perform under pressure, eh, dude? Okay, here we go. Okay, X, Y. Okay. And we get okay, there's my sine wave and my cos wave. Good enough, 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 good enough. Okay. Y is equal to sine x. Y is equal to cos x. Okay, so now let's do the h. So what if I had, as a transformation, y is equal to sine of x minus 60 degrees. Okay. So now my phase shift, my h, is 60 degrees positive, right? Because it's the opposite of whatever sign's in there. And so I have to know, okay, well, how, many, how much am I shifting every point along the x-axis? Because I know that this point is pi over 2, this point is pi, this point is 3 pi over 2, the full cycle is 2 pi, right, on my original. So these, these both have done full cycles from here to here just in different ways. We went from peak to bottom to peak, and then we went from middle to peak to bottom to middle. So that was one full rotation. So in this case, I want to shift my sine wave 60 degrees positive right. But I'm in radians here, so all I have to do is use how many radians is one degree? Well, so I've got to multiply pi over 180 by 60 to get a radian. So 160 times pi over 180, Degrees, the degrees cancel, I get pi, 60 pi over 180, which is pi over 3. So that means that every point on my sine wave needs to shift over by pi over 3. So my starting point will be pi over 3. And I, I don't know how, so, so I'm starting with the sine, so pi, What's pi plus pi over 3? Uh, it's 3 pi over 3 plus pi over 3. It's 4 pi over 3. So my new point here will be 4 pi over 3. So it's going to be around here. This is going to be... Hmm, sorry, so this should be right over here. This will be right over here. Two pi plus pi over three is six pi over three, seven pi over three. So right here. So these are, so then if I draw my, I'm terrible at this, this is kind of difficult to do, but if I draw my new function, it should look like, okay. It's going to keep going. Okay, so as you can see, it's been shifted to the right slightly. Okay, and that's what that's what h does. Now sometimes they give it to you in degrees, which means you have to do a, a transfer, unless you're working with degrees. I, I think I prefer to work with radians. But say you might you might have y is equal to cos of x plus pi over two. Okay. And in this case, my h is pi over 2. Negative, because it was positive there. So now I'm shifting 
all of my x coordinates, I'm moving, I'm basically taking my graph and I'm shifting it by pi over 2. So I'd have to take every coordinate that I want to work with, maybe the maxes, the mins, and the, and the, uh, the x intercepts, take those coordinates, those x coordinates, and reduce them by pi over 2 while keeping the same y. Okay? Hopefully that makes sense. But I think in the next video, we'll just start kind of playing around with practice problems from the textbook. Okay, bye.